It is uh, 7.45 on Saturday morning. Now, I asked a couple of minutes ago, how strong or how influential are and were the arts at changing people's minds, right? Life for gay people in the 50s can't have been easy, right? Homosexuality hadn't been legalised in the UK and one man who knew about the hardships that LGBTQ people faced as a man who's penned an extraordinary piece of work and he's called Carlton Paris and he joins me on BBC Radio Manchester. Carlton, this story just astounds me. Um, I think it's phenomenal and first of all, tell us about the play. Give us the name of the play and give us where it's on and the background. Certainly. Um, Thank you for inviting me. The play is called Once a Year on Blackpool Sands. Um, It's playing... a mini tour across the UK it's going off Broadway in September it's going to be made into a feature film and for Manchester it's playing the GM Fringe at the Three Minute Theatre in town and also at the Salford Arts Theatre both in July Tell me about the story right um, a comedy story of gay miners who risk <coughs> who risk everything for Once a Year on Blackpool Sands The title Once a Year on Blackpool Sands is kind of a poignant um, poignant title for, the, for Eddie and Tommy, uh, the leads in the play, which is all based on a true story, that was the only time they could risk actually spending a night together. And how they told me how this came about was that the whole town used to go to Blackpool for the annual pit wakes close mine, when the mine shut down. And they, they had to pro- procrastinate and pretend that they hadn't found anywhere, that they hadn't booked anywhere, so that they could risk actually having a room together Mm. and Eddie said to me you cannot imagine the power of having a door you can lock Um, it it seems inconceivable in 2018 so so the background of this is that basically that when they closed the mind every year there was a bit of a celebration and yeah. everyone came to Blackpool. The whole okay. town. It, it was. It was. It was kind of repeated across the north. The mill. Mm. The mill towns and the mine towns. It was a, you know, more or less. It, each each town or had their own particular wakes week, and um, probably ninety percent of the town used to get the bus together and head off to Blackpool. And it would have been perfectly normal then for everybody going to Blackpool that there wouldn't have been enough room in the inn, so to speak, yeah. for want of a better phrase. Yeah. And they could then share a room a locked room together they could share a room and they could joke about topping and tailing and trying to save money and you know but really it was the only time in the whole year that they could risk spending a night together they they couldn't spend a night together so so tell me about the play and 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 how it develops and and how you ended up writing this okay i met top the real life tommy and eddie in a bar in mykonos in um, 1982 83 um and it was one of those nights of lots of alcohol and the sort of telling of this remarkable story. It's a powerful, powerful story. It's funny and um, it kind of, it's stuck with me for 30 years and I've been procrastinating about writing it all this time. But can I just pop in and say there was an event. I was in the gay village and I was walking back to the train and there was a trans woman being harassed by six or seven well i can't really <laughs> i can't say what i'd like to say okay um and it and it just triggered the story that I'd, I'd had in my diaries for years and i and i kind of got home and i and i started to format that particular part of the story that night that night wow and then a couple of days later the whole meryl streep donald trump thing blew up and i kind of thought right enough carl you've had 30 years to write this story and i wrote the whole play in two days wow 
I think that's amazing. I mean, just just when you said that about uh, Wakes Weeks, I, I come from a small town in uh, in Lancashire. It used to be in Yorkshire, actually, <laughs> uh, one of those towns. And there was a Wakes Week there, and everything closed down, and all the tra- all the travel agents put on bus- buses and coaches to Blackpool. Yeah, every single time, and everybody everybody went to it was like Bonnells. It went to Blackpool, and that was in the seventies. And that just what I love about your story is the way that you said you met two people, and you have the real a real true life story and you're taking it and think actually there's so much in there isn't there, mm, sounded, there is. just this that it sounded a bit like broke back mountain in some ways of like two people who've got to hide something yeah but that like you say fight that top and tail and say there's a reason they can hide it but it's phenomenal isn't it and but, but really warm this is this is coming here if you have just tuned in um i have i'm joined by gary hanforth still the director of education at bright futures education trust and he's uh, throwing some questions at the brilliant carlton paris who's written this one year in blackpool sands it's coming to the larry we can actually see it in manchester coming up yeah you can see it at the salford arts theater um and at the three minute theater as part of the gm fringe the three minute theater is brilliant yeah it's a lovely intimate space that's going to really work for this play and tell me about the movie the rights etc etc when you can retire because of all this money you're going to get from hollywood <laughs> um the the film version is going to start shooting in october um i'm doing it in, in uh, collaboration with human element productions um and i'm really i'm actually off i'm heading to huddersfield later to do some exterior shots and some uh, establishing shots today mm. so uh hope the weather keeps good yeah do you, can it, do you get um in in that would you get rights over the way that that story is portrayed Absol- that it were, absolutely yeah. I, i've been offered quite a substantial amount of money for this screenplay um and i've declined because i feel honor bound to tell this story yeah correctly yeah because it was told to me incredible and i feel i feel like it's a bit of, it's kind of a gift that was told to me and i and you don't see stories about working class gay people get yourself on to greater manchester fringe.co.uk right greater manchester fringe between the first and the 31st of july there is absolutely everything going on there and have a little look for it because it is going to sell out if it hasn't already one year on blackpool sands and carlton paris thank you for joining me my pleasure on bbc radio manchester i can hold you all through the night when i'm no longer just I said yeah. That was a police. Your son was arrested last night. Arrested for committing an act of gross indecency with another man. He was arrested and taken to prison. Oh, I know you hear me, Hubert Corkill. I know you hear me. And now, well, now you reckon I'll... I'll fall to my knees in shame. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong as wrong can be. Oh, I mean, I am ashamed. Oh, I am drenched in shame. <laughs>